Hey guys, welcome back. Well, I've been using Nina's DIY trigger lately, trying to resolve some issues I have with stacking artifacts resulting after the autofocus runs. And I thought I'd share this experience with you because the DIY trigger is actually pretty useful, probably for more than what I'm using it for. Let's get started. So after each autofocus run, I've been getting these jumps in the pointing accuracy. So the pointing accuracy changes quite a bit, which in turn create stacking artifacts when you add all those images up into a single integrated image. And the reason I'm getting that is because of the forces that are being applied to the telescope by the autofocus motor. I have guiding disabled so that PhD2 isn't trying to fight back against those jumps because that would create an even bigger problem. But yeah, I'm coming up with stacking artifacts like this. This is what it looks like in the, the low rejection map coming out of the image integration process. This is what the image looks like. I'm getting these stacking artifacts that follow through and end up in my integrated image. And I wanna get rid of those things to the extent possible. And the Nina triggers are useful in trying to counter this sort of a thing. One of the things that you might be inclined to use is Cinder After Drift. I have tried to do that and it does help some, but there are some limitations with the Cinder After Drift trigger that we'll talk about. And then there's this relatively new DIY trigger that's been introduced as a new plugin for Nina. And I think this one actually does a much better job of solving my particular problem. So I wanted to go through the process I use to implement this DIY trigger in order to compensate for these image shifts that occur after autofocus. This is the telescope I'm using in this particular demonstration. I've got the ED-102, it's a 700 millimeter refractor. Of course, I've got the Pegasus Astro focus motor here that's attached to the focus knob and my, in this case, ASI 1600 filter wheel guide camera with the off-axis guider and, of course, the tube itself of the Explore Scientific scope. Whenever you initiate a autofocus run, the autofocuser turns the shaft, which generates a torque that's applied to the telescope and, in turn, a reactive torque back on the bracket where the autofocus motor is attached. Meanwhile, the tube, the camera, all this mass back here is sitting here minding its own business. Then this torque is applied, so this mass accelerates in, and therefore the mass times the acceleration creates forces. So if it's accelerating in, that means there's a force being produced uh, back out the opposite way that's applied to the mount and the scope. And then when the motor is done moving the focuser, there is a deceleration and a corresponding force back the other way. So all of these torques and forces are acting on the telescope and the mount, and that's what's causing this little bit of image shift that I'm seeing. And I see this with my refractors, and I see it with my SCT. The Euclid Space Telescope recently reached its L2 equilibrium point where it will start taking pictures in a sky survey format. James Webb Space Telescope is a science telescope designed to see details of objects, whereas this survey telescope is intended to map the entire sky. They just had their initial release of data after getting to the L2 point and getting up and running. And one of the targets that they imaged is IC342. It's a very nice spiral galaxy. It's covered behind a lot of stars in our own galaxy, which also means there's a lot of intervening interstellar dust between us and it that helps obscure it. So it is a difficult target, but it's also in a very difficult area for me. This is the same declination roughly as M81 and M82 that I always have a very tough time with. My calibration files don't always work well because of all the extra light that I have going on with neighbors' trees, backyards, the horizon light with the city beyond. And if you could see it, this is Polaris about right here. So this target and M81 and M82 are just circling Polaris. So I never get far from these bright lights coming off the trees and that changing orientation always affects my images. But what the heck, I'm giving it a shot to see what happens. Let's go over to Fix Insight and go into the Blink Utility and I'll show you what these jumps and the pointing accuracy are every time I do an autofocus run. So here's the image with IC342. That's the core of the galaxy there. I'm gonna zoom in just a tad so we can see it move a little bit better. I've got a series of images. These are luminance images, and I'm gonna just run through them in the order that they are taken. And then you'll see when we get these big jumps, that corresponds to an autofocus run having been performed in between the jump. So let's just get started here. I'll put my cursor on the uh, core of the galaxy. And you can see a bit of a jump there. 
Otherwise, in between, there aren't there isn't much move, motion at all. Of course, of course, I'm guiding. But I get these big jumps of almost 60 pixels that add up when you start bringing all of these images together into a full integration. And by the time you're done, you've got a pretty sizable stacking artifact that you're dealing with. The size of that jump is why I want to try to eliminate that from my imaging. Let's go over to Nina and I'll show you what my setup looks like. Here's IC342 as the RA and deck coordinates. This isn't the imaging sequence I was actually using. I'm having to image three targets in order to do imaging throughout the night, but this will serve as an example of how to go from what I was doing to what I am doing now. Then we can look at the corresponding results for that. Here in the trigger area, if you're not that familiar with the advanced uh, sequencer, we have a trigger for meridian flip, which once the scope gets up to the meridian, it will automatically detect that and do a meridian flip. I set an autofocus trigger at 80 minutes. I do vary this some, but 80 minutes is what I'm using here for this example. And then so every 80 minutes, Nina will jump in and do an autofocus. Meanwhile, I'm looping. And in this example, I'm looping until the sun comes up, which is when the sun altitude gets greater than minus 12 degrees. And again, for this purposes of this example, I just take one image, 200 seconds length and exposure, gain of 139, and with the HA filter here, and it just repeats this in a loop until the sun comes up, in theory, and every 80 minutes or so, it's going to kick in and do an autofocus run based on this trigger up here, and that's what's producing those jumps that we were just looking at. What is another way to do this? Well, one way is to do the center after drift trigger, and that's right here. And now it'll ask me a couple of questions here. Evaluate after how many exposures you make the best decision you want, say after 10 exposures. This is something you want to think about. At this image scale with the 700 millimeter telescope, 10 arc minutes, is equivalent to 500 pixels. That's certainly too much. Now we're down to 54 pixels, but we want something better than that. The 54 pixels is about what you were seeing as a jump after the autofocus run. So if we did a 0 0.25, now we're down to 13 pixels, which is a little more reasonable. It won't be as noticeable when it comes time for image uh, stacking. And here's the problem with this particular trigger. It'll wait for 10 images, and then it will use the last subframe, which in this case is a HA frame. And depending on where you're pointing and how what your exposure time is, you may not have a very many or very bright stars. So when it tries to plate solve that image, it may fail because of that. It's not using a bright image to do a plate solution for. And if it fails, well, it's not going to make any movement. It won't adjust. The second problem that you might have with center after drift if your telescope has some declination backlash, this correction may not work. It will calculate what it needs, to how far it needs to move in both DEC and RA, but if the DEC axis has some backlash to it, then you may not get any movement out of it. And that's basically what I was seeing when I tried to use this trigger before. I would correct in the RA, but I would not get the correction in the declination because of the backlash. So this wasn't working for me. Let's talk about that DIY trigger. You'll find it once you install it over here in the list under DIY trigger. Now, if you don't have this, you know where to go. You can go to the plugins, go to press the available tab, scroll down, there's a lot of good plugins here. DIY trigger is right here. Of course, I've already installed it, but this would say install if you don't have it installed. Once you get it installed, you'll have to restart, get out of Nina, get back in, and then it will be ready to be used. And then that will put DIY trigger in your list of instructions that you can pull from when you're in the advanced sequencer as I am over here. So let's pull in the DIY trigger and let's see how this works. What we need in this first box is a trigger event. That means we can pull from any trigger that's in the list and has a lightning bolt attached to it. And we could pull any one of these into uh, this box to serve as our triggering event. The thing to remember about this is that the triggering event does not actually perform the task. For example, if I want to put in the autofocus after time, as I have been using, I would dump it in here. Now I have it in here, but I'm doing this for a reason. I would say I want this every 80 minutes. So this will serve as my triggering event, but I need to put in instructions down in here. So now that it's been triggered, what is it going to do? Well, if I actually want to just replicate what autofocus after time does, I would drag in and run an autofocus in here. 
Now this DIY trigger has the identical effect of autofocus after time. That's one thing to remember is just because you put this trigger in here, this instruction is not being performed. It's just a triggering event. So this would get me back to start. And once I delete this, I haven't effectively made any changes now. I put the DIY trigger in, but I'm only getting an autofocus out of it. I'm not getting a correction. Now, in my case, I do stop guiding after I run uh, in order to run an autofocus, which means that once autofocus finishes, it starts guiding again. Well, I don't want it to do that because autofocus is not the only thing that I'm trying to do here. So I would scroll down here and pick up a stop guiding command. Because in general, I will be in the process of guiding when the autofocus trigger initiates. So that will stop the guiding. And then I'll bring up the start guiding afterwards. So that will start guiding again. This will prevent autofocus from starting up guiding on its own because it won't be guiding when the run autofocus is called up here. Now, the thing we need to do in order to correct for that image shift that we're seeing is actually go back in and perform a glue and center operation just as we would to get onto the target at the beginning of the night. This will initiate that iterative process of getting within the error limits that you've established, which means I need to go back into the options area, go to the plate solving, and come up in here and set this number here to what accuracy I want. So for example, if this is what I'm looking for, set it to 0.25, and that way even if you have some backlash in your system, there will be an iterative process where Nina will take a picture, in my case with the luminous filter, so that I get a good exposure and a higher gain. Then it will plate solve the image. It'll find out what the error is in the pointing. And then if it's not within the tolerance that we specify here, it'll repeat the process. It'll make another move. And then this way, it will chew up that backlash in your system if you have it. Let's go back to the sequencer now. I've got that set. And now I will stop guiding, run autofocus. Autofocus will also use the luminance filter. And if here, as I'm doing, I'm using HA, it'll switch back to the hydrogen alpha filter here. It won't have to restart guiding. It'll go right into the slew and center instruction. Again, it will switch from the hydrogen alpha filter back to the luminance filter. And then when it's finally repointed the scope back to the center within the tolerance that we specified, it will reestablish the hydrogen alpha filter that we're using down here and continue on into this loop after guiding settles once we start that back up. This is the instruction set that I'm using now with my DIY trigger. I'm getting the autofocus and I'm getting a pointing error correction out of it here. And it seems to be working pretty well. Let's go back over to Pix Insight, and I'll show you what the images looks like now that I've implemented this trigger. Let's go ahead and start this up, and here is the center of the galaxy here, and you'll see a little jump. That's the little jump now. It's jumped, but it was put back into place. It's within that roughly 10 pixel error that I've allowed here, and as you can see here, I'm not getting going to get any significant stacking artifacts now. Every time I do the autofocus run, I do the slew and center, and it corrects for the pointing error generated by the autofocus run, and that's going to work out a lot better. So that will cure the problem I was having. All autofocus motors are applying torques and forces to your mount that can affect the pointing accuracy of the scope. And then ultimately, when you add all those up, that can lead to the stacking artifacts that you've seen in my images. One way is to deal with it with a center after drift trigger and you just specify the number of images that you want to uh, wait before you evaluate. You can evaluate after every image. It's a lot of calculation. There are a couple of things that can happen with the center after drift trigger. However, you are plate solving a sub, and that sub may be fairly dark or fairly limited in the number of stars, depending on what scope you're using, what area of the sky you're pointing in. And if you're using narrowband filters, that plate solve of that particular image may not work out that great. So it may fail, and then you won't get the correction of the drift. Another issue that can come up is that the correction generated by center and drift is a blind correction. It's just going to, it knows what RA it thinks it's at based on the plate solve if it's successful, and it knows where it was supposed to be pointing. It just does a simple calculation of here's how much correction I have to apply in the RA direction and the deck direction based on the image scale of the scope. It doesn't do an iterative process of rechecking the new position against the intended 
center point and then correct for the error. So you will still get some images with some image shift. And that's why I went with the DIY trigger plugin. You have to use an existing Nina trigger as the DIY quote trigger event. And then that will trigger a series of instructions that you give it in the box down below, as you saw with that drop-down box that we entered. Keep in mind that the triggering event is just that. It's just a trigger. It doesn't actually perform the associated process with the trigger. So I'm using the autofocus after a certain period of time as a trigger. It won't perform the autofocus. You've got to put the autofocus into the box to make sure that that autofocus gets performed. I'm using it to correct for the image shift after autofocus. So I'm using the slew and center command. And in that case, I need a tighter tolerance to make sure that I'm staying within that error bar around the center of the image. So remember to go back and check your plate solve settings if you're doing what I'm doing. The DIY trigger works great. You might have additional needs or additional ideas for how you might use a DIY trigger. Give it a shot and see what you think. That's all I've got for today, guys clear skies and I'll check in with you later.